Okay, there everybody, it's Wayne D. Francesco. Welcome to WayneDFrancesco.com. If you're not already a member of the club site, I hope you'll consider joining. A lot of cool stuff. And here's a pretty cool swing. World's number one ranked amateur, Patrick Cantlay. Had an awesome year in 2011. He ended up winning the Haskins Award for the College Player of the Year. He's low amateur in the U.S. Open, the Canadian Open. He shot 60 at the Travelers. You know, this kid is uh, the real deal. Now, as we watch the swing, what you're going to see are some things that, if you followed what I teach, you certainly will note that these aren't things that I would be teaching. But, as we've also seen, when we look at the best players, and even young players like this, it's always interesting to see how they're going about doing their thing. Some of the stuff usually, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I really like in a swing. And uh, normally, if it's a swing where they're not doing some of the stuff that I talk about, then they're probably doing some of the other stuff that I talk about. So let's take a look. I've got two pretty good views here. Uh, one's a still camera from the front view with a driver, and the other one is a uh, medium iron shot to a par 3 where the camera is also nice and still. So it's always good to have a, a good camera angle because then we can always can actually draw the lines and see what see what's up, you know, in relation to the other players where I can put these lines on their swing. So let's take a look. First thing you'll note is that the hands in the club stay away from the shaft plane in front of him. So that as we get up to left arm parallel, you'll note that we've gone from 52 to 62. So, you know, 10 up, it's kind of in front. But as you can see, the right arm is nice and winged out by the side, which is something that I really like. Now the posture to begin with is is quite a bit on the vertical side and thus you would expect some lowering in the in the backswing and that's exactly what you see. Now when you lower and the hands come away from the body you would expect the progression to be a little bigger here. So 10 degrees, a little bit in front but not so much so that the left arm is way out almost parallel to the target line but there's a nice compression into the ground you'll see that the legs haven't really moved all that much pretty even movement with the knees a little depth gained in the right hip now at the top perfect swing plane you'll see the shaft really looks nice up there. The left wrist is a little on the bowed side but if you watch the face it's not shut so you know that the grip is fairly neutral and you can see that right over here in the front view of the driver's swing. You know, two knuckle, pretty neutral grip. If that grip was stronger then you would see more of the face pointed up toward the sky. So pretty classic backswing position and if we watch from the front again you'll see pretty classic load here really nice positioning coiling here so other than the hands coming slightly out instead of more inward I take this any day so here we are, you know, hips in the box. Touch of right load in the head, maybe an inch. Kind of like that. Club sets right at parallel. Now, this is where the swing begins to get a little bit different than, than what I would do. So I would call this more of a, a mid body or, or upper body spine oriented transition here so you can see it not a lot of push from the ground 
and the head's not really lowering very much more so if you watch it with the iron you'll only see a fraction of drop if any in that forward swing and there's a pretty good reason for that he's not really using the ground very much what he's doing is he's engaging the spine and starting the swing by swiveling more than he is driving and by the time he hits the ball you'll see a result here and that the head will back up and the left arm will buckle. Now that's a pretty significant bend in that left arm. So you only have a couple inches of lateral movement there, which really, relative to other players, is not really very much. So the arms are kind of running off. The body's not really pulling them straight and it doesn't seem to make any difference because when he, he flushes the thing anyway look at that beautiful beautiful lineup shaft to left arm now this this position here is so prevalent with good players I mean it's really something to try to emulate in your swing not that that's an easy thing to do but it certainly would be a good thing to be able to achieve of course even with his arm bent, look at what he gets out of that impact. Very nice, great footwork. Always like it when that right foot is driving inward and the heel is inside the toe like that. Now, at the end of this swing, you'll also see that head's way back and it'll stay there. And the hips will not shove up to where the left hip was in when it got to the left furthest left point and that's another thing that I would rather not see although I think here the camera moved just a fraction so he's probably forward of that hip line more a little bit more than that now this swings in slow motion so I can't take you through it at regular speed which is kinda of what I like to do um, but we'll play Try to find another couple of swings. We'll just play them at regular speed. Now, here in transition, you'll see another thing that, that I think is pretty significant. And that, it's something that I always look at. And it's the hand path from the top. So if you look at the very top of the swing here, where I dot the grip here. And then we follow it on the way down and we track and draw a line here let's see where it goes it's right there so it's right down in front of the feet so if you watch some of these videos that I've done when I look at Hogan Hogan's hands are going out above the ball a lot of players go at the ball and every now and then you find someone who drops his hands pretty vertically some guys even backwards if you look at uh, Keimer um, and Gary Woodland there's a few guys that drop their hands back and then bring them out. But Cantley drops his down. Now the interesting thing is that he's got such great squeeze with the arms that the right arm still manages to get right in front of him. The hands come in a little bit on the high side, more up by, the, by that second line. But the shaft is really, even though it went from, it, even though it steepened a little bit, starting down. He's got perfect control of it. And when I say steepen, take a look. I'll draw the shaft here. Now if you remember, Hogan would start down and the shaft would shift way over here. And Cantley starts down. Watch. The shaft immediately goes to a steeper position. But the neat thing is it doesn't tip out over at all. I mean, he wouldn't be that good if, if he tipped the club out in front of his hands. And of course, as are almost all really good ball strikers, his hips are nicely, nicely in the box. I think his pants are a little bit... He's got some extra pockets on those babies, otherwise they wouldn't be outside the box. <laughs> but, uh, so let's take a look at that at regular speed here. Again, pretty erect, not much not much knee bend. 
club goes, you can see it kind of go out up, out in front of him and kind of loop down under. But a nice, nice whip through the ball. Really like that. Kind of takes his time on the backswing and then just pounds right through it. Let's take a look, see if we got a driver swing. Pretty much sticks the finish. You can see it, he'll hold that. So again, you know, if you're looking at the, the overall pattern of this swing, you can see well out in the back swing. And then there's the there's the pull down. Well, Sneed always said that he pulled the grip down, although it didn't look like that. But you could argue that Cantley is definitely pulling the club with his arm, especially when you look at that left arm and watch how bent it gets right before he hits it. Also, the all the lowering in the first part of the in the backswing and then level. And when he hits it a little bit more lowering, great footwork again. So as you watch that left wrist kind of bow up there, it bows a little more on the way down. But he's certainly got control of the club face on the way through. Now here's a little shot that he that he hit. It's a little knockdown wedge. And even on this shot, where if I was teaching somebody to hit this shot, I would really accentuate the, the forward drive. You can see his feet just barely move. The right foot's almost not even rolled in at all. But still, look at how he sustains past impact. I mean, you can see the shaft is right there again. So another another example. Now, another thing you'll see on, on guys who hit these nice little pitch shots you won't see any right movement in the head, it just stays, drops a little bit, and then boom. So a great amount of talent. It'll be interesting to see what uh, becomes of him. But, you know, anytime that somebody is as good at a high level in these tour events as he is, it's rare that they don't really come out and do fairly well. Um, I mean, there's some guys that have been low amateur a couple of big tournaments and have failed to get their card right away, but uh, again, it's worth watching. Nice swing. Best amateur in the world, Patrick Cantley.